Previously on Science Max, we showed you how to make a baking soda and vinegar volcano in the kitchen. The kitchen is where we'll always start the show, showing you the materials and steps you need to build the small scale experiment. And you want dishwashing soap and not dishwasher soap. This doesn't make any bubbles at all. We didn't include the kitchen segment this time because mysteriously the set got broken. So, let's skip to just after the kitchen scene where I've already shown you how to make one balloon-powered rocket car, and now I'm making some other variations. Okay, so here's what I did. I took a cardboard box this time, and I've got my balloon here with a little cardboard cone in the back of it for thrust, and some, uh, these are just basically sticks, and some plastic drink caps. And there we are, my balloon-powered rocket car. Now I've made a couple other variations on just random stuff that I found around. Check this piece of styrofoam out. It looks exactly like a car. Look at that. So I decided to make the wheels out of cardboard in this case. And I've got a little metal ring here to give the balloon the thrust. So it goes along, it doesn't stay upright very well, so that probably won't work all that great. Here we have a cooler lid. It's a little styrofoam cooler lid. This time I made the wheels out of CDs. Now this is very important. If you're going to make the wheels out of CDs, make sure the CDs are ones you're never ever going to listen to again. That's the case with these ones. And now I've got the balloon and I put a straw on it because I thought maybe in this case, if I focus the stream of air down to a tiny little point, it would give it more thrust. Because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for thrust. I've also made, ooh, look at this one here. This is my lightest design, huh? Look at that. This is what you call minimalist design. There's very, very little to it. Just a one piece of cardboard. These are rubber door stoppers on some straws and sticks there. And the balloon with a little cone here for the thrust. And finally, my most solid state design, this guy right here. This is made out of brick, and these things are metal round things. I don't even know what they are. This, there's only one on this side, but there's two on that side. It's a three-wheeled car, but it, it goes straight, which is good. And here we have the balloon and a little cone here to give it the thrust. So this one's gonna be great. All right, let's go see how these work. Sunday, 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 at the Bay Center Battlegrounds. It's the balloon-powered car winner take all drive race and rally. See amazing new rocket cars, like the Exterminator. Eliminator, the Procrastinator, Super Mega Hyper Ultra Tri Wheel Prickometron, and George. First up, the Exterminator. The important part is to blow up the balloon so you get the thrust. <laughs> the Eliminator. Truck of balloon powered cars. George! Okay, this is the lightest model I have. Hopefully, this will perform better. <laughs> That was great! That really worked well. Now, I need some experts to help me. This is Steve, metallurgist, mechanical fabricator, welder, and machinist. And this is Jane, grad student at the Mechanical Engineering Department of the University of Toronto. Two bold designers who will max the experiment out to the max! Jane, today we're talking about Newton's third law. For, For every, every action, action there's, there's an equal and opposite reaction. reaction. Right, so how does that apply to our balloon car? Well, we'll have a balloon pushing air this way, mm -hmm. and therefore the air will push the car forward. Well, why didn't that work with this one? Super mega hyper ultra triangle for oh, oh. Phil, uh, you made this out of a brick, so? small balloon, too heavy. Oh, you know, oddly enough, this one worked the best. George! Yeah, I would say that's because it's a light design. Mm -hmm. We'll have the same size balloon, light object, we'll be able to move it much faster. The lighter it is, the easier it is to push. You got it. Makes a lot of sense. 
let's take a closer look at Newton's third law of motion. It states, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Take a fire hose. The force of the water coming out of the hose also forces the hose to go backwards. This is why firefighters have to hold tightly onto a fire hose. Let's have another example. Say you were in a boat and you wanted to get out. Max pushing off the boat pushes him forward, but it also pushes the boat backward, leaving Max only part of the way to the dock. Even swimming, Max is pushing the water backwards in order to go forwards. Let's use another example. Ice. If Max were to push something, Max moves backwards as well as moving the thing he was pushing forwards. It's the same with rockets. The exploding gas is forced backwards out of the rocket in this direction, which pushes the rocket in this direction. The gas goes very fast, which gives enough force to push the heavy rocket. It's the same with the balloon. The air coming out the back pushes the balloon forward. And there you have it. Newton's third law. Coming up on Science Max, we create a human-sized balloon-powered vehicle. So, we want to okay. make this as big as we possibly can. So you're going to sort of max it out, eh? Max it out, indeed. Um, max. Maybe something, I don't know, human well, size. I got a cart that looks just like that. OK, okay. that's a good start. Well, there's the wheels. We can take these out. And so we're going to get this big balloon. We'll need some frame. How big is this balloon? Um, I think I can get a pretty big balloon. Like I think, six feet? I think, well, I don't know about six feet, but I think I can get a balloon like this big. What okay. if we try something slightly different? Hey, there's an idea. <laughs> so we take both. You sit here and hold the balloon. <laughs> OK, so I'm like this, and I hold the balloon. Would you, is that, this is ridiculous. Nah, nah. It's ridiculous. There's no way. Because what happens, how do I steer? Bigger wheels might Larger even wheels. be a better idea. Like, so this is a bicycle? This is well, a bicycle. Well, why not? It's got the big wheels, that's and that's a bicycle. That's a good idea. I like that. Bicycle. Let's weld them or, together. Or weld them or bolt them, whatever, whatever way works. I like this guy. Weld them together. Yeah, that's the good them. answer. All right, so um, two bikes. Two bikes. Weld them together. I will go get two bikes. OK. All right. So while Steve and Jane start construction, I search for parts. Cardboard only. Ugh, garbage. <laughs> Oh, ha, ha, ha. Huh? <laughs> Part of a bike. No handlebars, no seat, but I don't really think we need those. Nice. Perfect. I just made a wheel. I just found three. Good, we got four. Some quick assembly, a little bolting, a dash of welding, and our cart is ready. Now all we need is to add the thrust. So far, so good. Are you sure this will protect my eyes? No! OK! <laughs> How much longer do you want to go? Keep going! All right, we keep going. We're keeping going! Bigger! Woo! One, two, three! What happened? Nothing. It's flat. Dude, that was really disappointing. You know, that didn't, that didn't work at all. Well, um, OK. So <laughs> uh, back to the drawing back board, Back to the drawing guess. board. Yikes. Like any good scientist, when things don't go right, we go back to the drawing board, in this case, literally, and try to solve the problem. 
Absolutely. One of the things we could try is using the balloon without your body weight. And in this particular design, there is no fill. Oh, it'll be cool. Okay, ready? Okay. Go! That really was pathetic. In Science Match, we will do a big experiment, but we will also do a small experiment. So, today's small experiment involves this, a bag of water. Wow. Now, if you take a bag of water and some sharpened pencils and you push them through very gently, the pressure of the water against the bag will actually prevent any water from spilling out as you push the pencils through. Huh? Look at that. You can do it as many times as you like, as long as you go gently, and you don't pull the pencils back out again, and marry a drop will spill. All right, well, maybe one or two drops. Now, even though we call this the small experiment, we're still gonna do it big. First, I need to get a big pencil. Huh? Not bad. Now, to sharpen. One massive bag of water, one pencil sharpened to perfection, and I'm going to sit right here because I trust this experiment to work. I don't know why. I have no reason to. Will the bag of water work on a large scale? Will Phil stay comfy and dry? Find out when Science Max continues!